All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Neil Amy, who is actually all the way over in the Netherlands near Eindhoven. How are you doing, Neil? Good, good. Thanks for having me, John. Of course. And Neil's the founder and CEO of, of Rayobite, a company started at 21 serves over 5,000 customers, including Fortune 500 companies, uh, with a focus on web, uh, web scraping. And what we're going to talk about today is authentically being yourself, lessons that you and your company have learned from trying to compete in a red ocean commodity market. Uh, so tell me, you went in, uh, back in 2024, you decided to confront this issue head on, right? It started this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we kind of put our company into three eras. We have Railbyte 1.0, Railbyte 2.0, Railbyte 3.0. And it's about three years for each era. We're in three, three, and two. And the first three years, we were authentic. I was authentic because I was growing it, just one person at a time, one customer at a time, because I was naive and didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. And so I was just showing up to customers, showing up to the world, showing up to how I was promoting our brand. Just saying, hey, come check me out. And then I got sucked into kind of the, the the gurus that tell you you should you should act a certain way to attract certain types of clients. This is what enterprise and B2B customers want to see. And I would study competitors and and it got to a point where we were we were everything to everyone, which was nothing to nobody at the end right. of the day. Yeah. <laughs> And so when you came to that realization that you were trying to be everything to everybody and you were just falling, you know, between the cracks because of that, um, what what process did you go through to reach the decision to say, OK, we're going to have to really kind of turn things around and try and position ourselves as being something to somebody like get very get very targeted in who, who we can serve? Uh, it was a long leadership, cultural I mean, over the course of the entire year last year, I mean, it took a whole year of conversations. Who are we? Who are we at our best? Who were we at the beginning? What made us unique? What made us special? And these types of conversations shaped up over 12 months between myself, journaling and journal a lot on this, this coming back to our roots and then bringing it to our leadership team. And that's where we're trying to be today. Right. And what was, what was the most, uh, as you went through that process, what, what surprised you most? how dang difficult it is and it's going to be to 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 step out of the red ocean it's a red ocean for a reason because everyone does it and it's it's it can get you small money in the short term but i i have a feeling that in the long term it's not the best mm -hmm. um and i've always felt that um it's and and let me know if this was something that you came up against is that it's very easy when you sit down with your team and you know you're strategizing. It's very easy coming up with things to do and new things to do. And but it's really hard for people to stop doing things and to get rid of things. And I guess that was probably part of the challenge you had as you went through this is sort of people letting go of things and saying, okay, well, we're not going to do that anymore. Maybe something that you've invested a lot of time and energy in that suddenly you're going to go, well, we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah. Um, from an activities perspective, um, th that's still taking shape, uh, how we want to talk to customers, how we want to communicate to customers. But on the, the marketing side, what jumps out to me the most is we had to stop communicating to our customers, especially on our website. Hey, we're this pretty B2B company. Come come buy from us, Fortune 500. And it's, it's not us. So if you go to our site now today, our homepage isn't done yet, but all the inner pages are, you'll see a completely different theme and, and style to our approach. And that that was difficult for our marketing team to rewire their brains from, from five years of mm -hmm. this kind of, dare I say, corporate and lifeless type branding to something that is is a bit edgy at, at, at times in some of our pages. Right, right. And and so what is what is being your authentic selves? Uh, what what does that mean to you? It, it, um, it, it's being it's being human. Um, I, I, I have the opinion that business has gotten it wrong, that we have to show up and be 
postured and punctual and all the other P words that pop out. But I looked back at what, when I had the most fun and when we had the greatest success as a company, it was when we were just talking to customers as, as another human being. Hey, dude, or hey, what's up? What's going on? Like Just like having fun, laughing, and and, and not not caring so much about what, what how we're supposed to, to, to appear. And that authenticity uh, uh, comes out, how we communicate with our customers, our customer support team. But then our marketing team is, again, on our website, we now have pictures of our team as well as our customers as, as humans. Hey, here's this person and here's the role they play as an employee. But then also we're doing these things called uh, rail bite stories where we're highlighting a customer, but it's not a boring crap case study that I see at too many of our competitors. It's instead, it's saying, look at this individual. This, this, this person is awesome. Let's focus on them and oh, comma, by the way, they do web scraping as a as five percent of the article. The ninety five is about how cool they are as a as a human being. Ah, that's interesting. And and uh, and how have you? Uh, has everybody in the organization kind of signed on to this change, or did, or were there? You know, because this often happens when you go through a change. Were there people who say, "Yeah, that's a great idea. It's just not me. It's not where I want to be." I uh, from from a, a, a the personality perspective, I, 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 I everyone's totally on board with it. It's who we are as a culture. From a what we're fighting against is is enterprise B two P sales many times are more profitable than B two C or SMB mm -hmm. sales, and we see that with our Fortune five hundreds that we serve. And so to say, hey, we want our website to target SMBs and consumers is going against the profit maximization mm -hmm. principles. And and I one of my challenges is to tell the team it's it's not all about the most profit maximization. We believe in a concept called conscious capitalism, that there's more important than, than just the maximum dollars. And I believe in the long term we'll come out ahead if we stick to our authentic selves. Yeah, and, and and I guess that's an interesting it's an interesting approach because most people go in the other other direction. They try to move out of consumer and yeah. and and small, you know, small and move up you know, medium to enterprise. So um that I mean that's a very obviously it's a very different market. What what made you focus on that market as opposed to trying to build on the enterprise? It, it really comes back to my experience with most enterprise, we do have uh, the, the few enterprise, the, the B2Bs that we work with are, are awesome. I, I have conversations. I still text with like one old one from, from nine years ago, like personal relationships. What I, my experience with the majority of, of B2B is, again, it's a transaction. Hey, I, I be a big company, need this for, I need this service or good from you. Sign the papers, follow this SLA and shake hands and, and we're out of there. Sure, we have some conversations, but there's no poop, poop emojis or a cuss word in a call. It's, it's let's get down to business and we're, we're, we're finished. And again, I, I, I want to have more fun with business. And, and that's where I feel like I can reach that, that authenticity with B2Cs, SMBs. On the other side. Right. And I guess one, one of the big challenges, obviously, with, uh, with, with B2C and that end of the market is the is as you mentioned earlier, is that it tends to feel commoditized, tends to yeah. feel like there's very little loyalty there. You know, people will jump for a couple of dollars less to a you know a, a product that yeah. they perceive as being the same. So how do you uh, how are you going to differentiate yourself and make yourself sticky in in that end of the market? Uh, it's a, it's a big challenge in our market now more than ever. Competition is rising every day, so I don't have all the answers to that. What I I'm betting on and putting my chips on is again when I look at all the other brands who serve or would accept B 2 Cs or that's their target, and I look at their websites, I look at their personalities, I look at what they're doing, I look at ours. My hope is it will attract the consumers and say, "Hey, these guys." these guys are me. I, I want to work with them. And that's my differentiator rather mm -hmm. than other you know, price or otherwise. Right, right, right. And, and what do you see? Um, and how do you how do you go about reaching these reaching the right target audience now? Because I mean, obviously, if you're going after the fortune 500, you're going to be targeting different places, different types of people. I mean, I guess now from your marketing and outreach point of view, you have to be focused very differently. 
Yeah, well, that, that was another thing that brings us back to our roots. Um, our first brand name was Blazing SEO, a terrible name that I, that I, that I had because we sold web scraping and proxies. Um, but I targeted SEO, uh, mm -hmm. the niche back then, is just all I knew, and I knew I could target them. Um, we rebranded now to Railbyte. And, but the SEO in the name is I have I came up and grew up in SEO. And right. so from day one until now, that's still our strongest marketing channel, which is very, very good for the B2C SMBs versus enterprises. Mm -hmm. It's a different way to target them, in my opinion. Yeah. And uh, and as you've as you've gone through this transition, um, are you disengaging from some larger customers? Or are you just letting them work through their normal life cycle? Yeah, working through their normal life cycle as as the transactional nature that they want. It's like, okay, we'll show up and we'll we'll do this. We'll help you. Tell us what you need, and we're not going to say no to them. And again, like I said, there's we have we we have B two Bs that I I enjoy. I, I've flown to meet them. We have some beers, and like they're they're cool people. And like I would love to work with more of those. It's just the statistical anomaly that I've come across in, in that mm -hmm. side. And so, and so, from a culture point of view, have you um, had to? I know it's more reflective of your, cult, your culture, what you're doing now. But have you had to change kind of the way you work internally, maybe the way you present externally, in order to you know, become more aligned with your culture? Um, we're being much more transparent. Um, so we actually have a public playbook that we, the world can see, our competitors can see that slowly we're adding pages to it that define, here's how we operate. Here's how we think about this. Here's how we think about customers. Here's how we think about vendors. Here's our purpose. Here's our mission. Here's our core values. And it's probably, I don't know, 15 pages now at this point that describes things that you don't see in most private companies. And again, my, my belief is that by being more open and transparent internally, but showing our internal team, look, we're doing this externally, but then also our customers seeing it externally, hopefully builds a level of trust that our competitors are unwilling to go to that, that level. Yeah. So why, so Tim, talk to me a little bit more about transparency. You said, uh, I mean, obviously externally, but internally, is that the case too? Uh, in, in which regard? In transparency. I mean, in turn, are, are you, are you extremely transparent internally in your organization as well, as well as working on being publicly transparent? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the same it's the same message, and if not more, I try to make it almost a one to one. I want to be as transparent with our customers as as our internal team members. But they know they know the the direction, they know the strategy. They, I, I believe, they're bought in, anyways. <laughs> and then, how do you how do you ensure that you um, that you balance that you don't go you know too far in the direction of you know you want to be authentic, you want to find all of that, which is which is great. But how do you balance that to make sure that you don't go too far in that direction and like it actually harms your ability to operate yeah. or to to deliver? Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a tricky question because I'm I'm you, you may say a rebellious spirit, so. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna push the limits there and test the limits to see how far is too much. Just and, and so so uh, there's been there's been some things. I'm like, hey, what about this marketing campaign where we go do some insert crazy uh, out there? And I've had like quick push, but like, no, you know, we're not doing this for a team. Like, okay, okay, no, that's that's <laughs> not the idea. But I keep testing it, and I'll, I think I'll find my limit someday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And tell me, and and as you as you started to go out with this, what has the reaction been uh, in the market? What has the reaction been from your current customers? Um, it, it's, it's so hard to measure something like that, especially in the our, our market is an infrastructure product, so there's there is little opportunity for interaction. It's just like does does the computer does the server turn on or off? Okay, mm -hmm. it's on. Okay, I don't I don't need. So we don't get to talk a lot, but the ones. What I can say, and maybe this anecdotal, is we've heard people tangibly say, "Hey, whoa! I saw this, and I started to work with you." Or even a vendor, he said, "He said I decided I wanted to talk to you guys." It was a very important vendor. He said, "I decided I wanted to talk to you guys after I read what you're trying to do here with your your, your mission as a company." And so we've had we've had like real tangible proof, but maybe you know maybe it's at the size of our company, maybe it's not so much, but it's at least, it's at least anecdotal. Something's working. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. And then just tell me, what is your advice to other people who may be listening to this, who maybe are thinking about I've got to kind of um, 
refocus and and find you know get very lin get very uh, granular on my target audience but i'm but i'm really worried about letting go of all of these other things that i've been doing even though they're not kind of core to my business and you know maybe they've been just things that i've been doing because i needed revenue yeah yeah what i'm what i'm learning through this process is our competitors are, are are huge 10 20 30 times our size so if we try competing one to one with them have the same corporate lifeless site target try targeting b2b maybe smbs in there we're going to lose Every dollar we spend on any kind of marketing or sales they're spending 10 20 or 30 dollars and, and then and then head count over that more brain power that they have and so the way i look at it is if we don't try doing something different we're just going to die we're eventually just going to die and so <laughs> i'd rather take the gamble and, and try surviving for the long term or, or say we, we did our best yeah and and then um and how much have you i uh, mean the the employees in the company how much of this has been a collaborative effort uh you know to make sure everybody's engaged everybody understands everybody's on board yeah so when we launched our our purpose our company's purpose is to help people bring their great ideas to life that's just a one sentence fluffy but mm -hmm. when you start breaking that down we have examples our playbook describes it before we came up with that well I, i'd had the idea in mind I, I went and met with about half our company at that time and i just gut checked i'm like hey what do, what do you think we do good at as a company what tell me what types of products we do and 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 then as they were kind of starting to articulate what i had written i said what do you think about this purpose statement and then just seeing their, their eyes light up oh wow yeah that that is us and mm -hmm. so I, I feel like there was there was some already buy-in before we even launched it but to hear them affirm it in their own ways and then then definitely for a minute when i said it I meant, I meant that we're on to something it is us and and looking back now on the road that you've traveled even thus far i mean is there anything you would do differently at which point at any point at, at the point of when you decided that you needed to refocus the company that the journey you've been on since then is there any lessons you've learned that perhaps you do differently or you advise somebody else I, I'm actively learning right now. It's it's, it's uh, uh, the, the the lesson the lesson I'm learning is it's a lot more work than I was. I was hoping we could just change our website and put out some pretty emails and it, it would it would just it would just magically work. But it's a uh, it's a grind. We're a year year and a half later and we still got still got some work to do. Yeah. So when do you think you're going to be ready for for have? When do you think? I mean, this is obviously always an ongoing process. But I mean, when do you think the first? When do you think you'll be first? You'll be finished with your first major milestone. I, I would say we're there. Ninety percent of our site is up to date, and we also have our, um, as I said, the Railbyte stories, where we have a, a growing catalog of of these really, really great, powerful stories, in my opinion. And so I think that is the, the first milestone. Now it's it's a matter of kind of scaling it and, and, and measuring that impact. Yeah, yeah. And then just, just a quick question, then your um, your organization, um, how do, how does that operate? Is it, a, is, are you together? Are you virtual? Are you, uh, because yeah, the reason I ask is just because uh, obviously when you're going through changes and you know culture changes and focus changes and stuff i mean getting keeping everybody on board when they're virtual or remote or whatever you know that has its own little challenges too yeah yeah we're, we are fully fully remote as a company mm -hmm. we started fully remote for the first three years and then during that rail bike 2.0 period we said hey let's be in person and that was a terrible idea it was a big yeah. lesson learned and, and then we went back to fully remote again yeah, yeah. So, how, did you find that um, going through these changes and that you had to pay more attention to communication because of the people being remote? It's hard for me to measure since we always were where we started the company the first three, four years. We were fully remote, so communication just was. It wasn't something our culture just yeah, yeah. was how we did it. Was how we did it. So we haven't really changed too much in that regard. I would say. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, we 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 made a strategic decision many years ago to to be largely remote, and uh, you know that yeah. has served us served us very very well, particularly when 
things like COVID pop up and uh, yeah, everybody's right. scrambling and we were like, yeah, no, yeah, no. exactly. Same. The processes <laughs> are in place. The tools are in place. It, it, exactly. Yeah. You were laughing matter. when you yeah. think people are like, oh, we've got to figure out how to do all of this. And you go, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that. Just another day. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, Neil, this has been fascinating. All of Neil's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Rayobite. Yes, please, please. If if you need anything, the web scraping railbite.com is our company site. And I love, I love to talk with other fellow entrepreneurs, people interested in business. Um, on my personal blog, I write pretty often at neilamy.com. So follow me there if you have anything I said here's of interest. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thanks again, Neil. Thank you for watching and listening. Yeah.